guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name's Laura and I cover anti-MLM, that's anti-multi-level marketing commentary. And if that is something that interests you, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I cover every week, usually once a week, but hopefully I can be able to do more as the holiday season is coming and I'm approaching my one year mark of YouTube videos. Also have merch and stuff like that down below if you'd like to send me any of your MLM horror stories or any MLM content that you come across, just screen record it or something like that and then you can send it with instructions down below on how to do that. Okay, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's get into some more MLM fails. I have it saved in my folder. We're just gonna go through them completely random. Let's go. Dancing and some singing in my water bottle and I knocked over the cup. Now I'm laughing hysterically. Uh, obviously I'm gonna have to mute the sound. Maybe I'll do something fun there. But it says, when you find a product you love that helps you achieve less joint pain, stronger hair and nails and improved skin. I like how she implies that you're going to be cured of joint pain, but she uses the words achieve less joint pain. So that it's like trying to skirt around the health claim rules and then stronger hair and nails because stronger is subjective and then improved skin because that's subjective as well. But to a person that doesn't know those kinds of clues, this is very misleading and still very much health claim oriented because it's a health claim. I found a product that achieves all these things for me and and then it says bye bye powder collagen. So this is a Modere rep and they recently came out with like a liquid collagen. Having to put in work to personally develop myself. And then it says, so that I can help other people change their lives. You are putting in the work to personally develop yourself and so that you can help other people change their lives. MLMs tend to do this. They will refer to personal development. So if you're not working hard enough, you need to do personal development. They twist that. It's like personal development on its own is not necessarily the problem so much as the way MLMs use it as a manipulation tactic to say you're not working hard enough. So this is saying having to work hard to personal develop so that I can help other people change their lives. What that really means is so that I can recruit people into my downline so that I can make money. Mompreneur, CEO, boss babe. Boss lady, fempreneur, you can call me boss, CEO, business owner, entrepreneur. We deserve to be taken seriously as women in business. She's saying, that's not my name. And the song is saying, that's not my name. And then it's point, boss babe. You can call me a boss, CEO, business owner, entrepreneur. I think in one of my previous fails videos, I highlighted about how they're not entrepreneurs because they aren't owning the business. They're not CEO, they're not the business owner, and they're not the boss. And so she is saying boss, CEO, business owner. She's like saying, call me those things. Don't call me boss lady. Don't call me boss babe. Don't call me fempreneur, like those kinds of things because it's like not taking it seriously. But see, people call themselves that in MLMs, but they also call themselves this and all of those names shouldn't apply because they're independent contractors and that person actually is a network marketing coach so she puts out training programs for network marketers or MLM people like she makes her money off of training other people like because she knows that's where the money's at great detail I'm gonna elaborate to you why I believe that's true and why I think you're looking at maybe 1% market penetration for the industry over the next 10 years, I believe it can grow a hundredfold. I actually believe that. And I think I'll prove it to you. I think you're gonna find that more and more people will gravitate to this business model because the incomes we can make without the overhead, without the leverage, without the debt, that 
businesses that require that debt leverage and overhead just don't produce anymore. They just don't produce. And pandemics can put you out of business real quick when you're in those other businesses and they don't do anything negative to us. In fact, the wind's at our back because more people want to work out of their home. So even when adversity hits, we're better. When the economy's bad, we're better. When the economy's good, we're better. So it, man, we're agile. You know, it must be really nice to be at the top of network marketing and to be able to just like say that we're better, like we're better when anything happens because I have a downline that I can fall into and or like I'm a CEO or I'm a network marketing guru and it must really feel good to be better than everybody else. That being said, there's some issues with what he's saying here because the fact is that it is an oversaturated market and yes there may be potential to earn money but that potential is less than one percent like to actually be successful if you don't get in early of course sometimes you can make a little bit of money but you spent a lot more money a lot of times people don't look at the expenses involved so they only look at the profit they make but they don't look at how much they're spending on products and break even or something so I encourage you to always look at your income disclosure statements for an MLM before getting involved because they're going to want to show you their compensation plan which shows like all the bonuses you can receive and all that stuff that just tells you the potential that is not probable like on your photos I will engage on your stuff I will find things I like I will watch your story this isn't only a recruiting technique, okay? This is how I make friends, right? There's people on Instagram, I had no idea who they were. I stumbled across their page because they stumbled across my page. I was like, oh my God, this is like my new freaking best friend. Like, are you kidding That's me. me. Like, I'm your friend. Friends? We're right? besties. She said I could say it. <laughs> Okay, this is just another thing where Dre is flexing about Boss Lee. I guess crushing on Boss Lee. Oh my gosh, he's obsessed with it. It really shows like when you like someone that is already known to be problematic, your role models say a lot about you. And so like it's really not, <laughs> in my opinion, not a great thing. But if you haven't, if you don't know about like Dre and Boss Lee, definitely check out some of my other videos on that. You can also check out um, CC Suarez and Isabella Lanter. There's info about all that. Talking about friendships that you make like through this, I've mentioned it in some previous videos, but friendships that are made through MLMs are often very conditional. They rely on the what's in it for me in the MLM kind of thing. So if I made a friend through an MLM and I recruited them and then they weren't pulling their weight or like they left or something like that, I wouldn't be friends with them anymore. I'm not saying, I mean, that would be MLM me like previously or something like that. But I'm just saying that the MLMs that that's the way it tends to work because you're you're often having to like I mean some MLMs they'll even shun you like if you leave and it's that that much of a commercial cult. OMG, I just got a new recruit. Yay, I'm making money. Okay, so this is when you help another person start their own business. And I just had to bring this up because you're not starting your own business and you're not helping another person start their own business. This is just another example of them thinking that they have their own business when they really don't. If you really have your own business, you would not have to you would own it you would own the products you would be able to make changes to the products you would be able to do a lot more you're paying into an mlm so you don't have to have all that overhead and all that stuff right but you don't own anything and they can dismiss you you've got the upline you've got the ceos they can change things and you rely on recruiting others into your downline in order to make a measurable income that's worth anything. The opportunity to change someone's life is unexplainable, but it's what I do now. Comment a heart if you want your life changed also. 
hashtag own boss, hashtag own your own business, hashtag art bond, hashtag flexibility. Yeah, like I said, you're not your own boss when you're in art bond. And I've been in Arbonne, so I know. One, two, three. Everybody want to buy my products. Everybody want to join my business. Okay, this really upsets me. It says mood, and then Dre posted this, and it says, I know that's right, start them young. And then they're saying, everybody want to buy my products. Everybody want to join my business. Starting them young, it's not, oh, it's not good. Well, for one thing, they illustrate here everyone want to buy my products so that's the selling part but join my business that's that's the recruiting part again not your business but for the sake of what they're saying selling and recruiting definitely more on the recruiting side because they're constantly all over social media trying to recruit and this is of course with monate what upsets me is that they're doing this being like starting them off young and everything like that because it's like once this girl hits 18 kind of thing and I know it's kind of a bit of a of like a joke because they're just in the room it might be like a little sister or something like that but still it highlights that they really will just take anybody first of all I'm gonna do both are you gonna cry about it or are you gonna boss up first of all I'm gonna do both Okay, so this is when you plan an epic reel and get only a couple of likes. I plan reels and don't get a lot of views. It's fine. It's part of growing, you know? This is the same Modere rep that was in a previous reel. There's not much to say on that one other than they're constantly putting out a bunch of reels. If they don't get interaction and stuff, it's like, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world because no one is interacting with me. The thing is that like, a lot of people now know about MLMs, how it's not associated with good things. So like most of the time people have heard that there's some sort of controversy around MLMs as a business. It's not like there's going to be as much interaction with those because they don't want you to start pestering them to purchase stuff or to join. A lot of times the people that do like or comment are other people in the MLMs themselves trying to make it seem more legit, more engagement. This one is about mindset hacks for the soul and it says Top four mindset hacks that are making you freeze in your business. Comment the one you struggle with most below. Let's roll it. Hello, happy Thursday. Um, I'm on lunch break at work right now, but I thought I would come, come on really quick and talk a little bit about mindset and why it can sound really intimidating um, to be in direct sales. First off, she's on lunch break at work and she's sitting in her car to talk about mindset to us and about direct sales. So literally working on her lunch break at her other job. So who here is scared to do direct sales because they're scared of going live? I wouldn't say scared so much as don't want to, but okay. Who here is scared about what other people are gonna think about them, how they're gonna judge them or how they're gonna look at them now that they're in the social selling industry? And who here just straight up thinks that nobody's gonna care what you have to say? It's also me. Okay, I am all three of those things and I'm sure all of you are in that same boat as me too. So there are so many factors that go into social selling, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about the people around you, and just where your mindset is um, when you're starting your own business. And I actually wrote these down so I wouldn't forget my touch points because there's some really important things um, in here that I think people need to realize before they go into this industry so they can go in it with a mindset of abundance, a mindset of knowing that they can do it, they are worth it, and that it is going to change their life. So the number one reason that most people don't want to get into social selling, they have a mindset of scarcity. There's too many people in this industry. People don't care what I have to say. There's already so many people in that business. It's just already flooded. It's There's no way that I can do it. Let me tell you what, you can reach so many new people that somebody else can't. Your network is so different than what somebody else's is. There is never enough people in the social selling, selling industry. There's never enough people that can talk about how the products changed your confidence, how the 
business has changed your life has given you some sense of fulfillment. So scarcity is just a mindset. You need to realize that people care about what you have to say. People are watching you and people want to hear about how you can help them. It's all about giving value. And once you have that mindset, I think people want to be listened to more than they want to be like helped. Well, this is just from my perspective, because as someone with chronic pain and illness, people approach me to try to help me. A lot of times it does more harm than good because I don't want people to be coming at me saying how they have this essential oil that will treat my condition or have I tried these supplements, this different thing. It's not really that helpful. And it can sometimes be very off-putting when it's unsolicited. Also this scarcity mindset that she's going into because she's painting this picture that it's not oversaturated when we know that it is. If you break down how many people are in the world and how much they have recruit, it's a lot. There's a lot of people that are in MLM. It's just very oversaturated and being someone that has been on the inside in the MLM. I've been in MLM groups, direct sales groups, where you're literally trying to trade with other people for like parties and sales and stuff because you're desperate because you're not able to get people into it. And a lot of people are becoming more aware thanks to the anti-MLM movement that they're becoming more aware of the problematic structure of the MLM business and where you're constantly having to recruit. So yeah, this whole scarcity thing that she's talking about, how it's not scarce and there's plenty of people in your market and everything. A lot of those people, your warm market, your warm and hot market, as they like to say, is your friends and family. When I asked a bunch of friends and family, it got to be so, you know, pushy for them that they would block me, delete me off of friends, not have anything to do with me. They're like, oh, Lara is going to sell to them. Oh, Lara is going to try to recruit me. I should avoid. So yeah, this whole thing is try again. You're going to be golden. Okay. Another one is the limiting belief. You think you're not good enough. You think that you can't do it. You think that you're not pretty enough, that you don't feel good enough to do it, that you're not confident enough. And guess what? You are all of those things. You can get on here and do this. And it's actually a fun fact that I learned when you go to do something new, when you go to do something that you don't like, your body, once it senses that you're not comfortable with doing that thing, it actually triggers all of these, we'll call them symptoms inside of you. So when you're uncomfortable with doing something, your body's gonna say, okay, we're gonna start sweating. <laughs> we're gonna give you a headache. We're gonna give you anxiety. We're gonna make you feel nauseous so that way you don't do it. It's its way of protecting you from doing something that makes you uncomfortable. But I have news for you. Doing what makes you uncomfortable is what's gonna get you far in life and it's what's gonna help you succeed. Nobody got anywhere by not doing the things that are out of their comfort zone. Now, obviously there's limits to this, but again, me doing lives, that was something I was extremely uncomfortable with. I am an introvert, I was super insecure and going live and doing this, it was a whole new realm for me. I was like, what are people going to think of me? So limiting belief is another one. Um, you need to realize that you are good enough, that you can do this, and that there are so many people in the world out there that just want to help you be able to do this so you can create a better life for you and your family. Okay, so limiting beliefs. I did think I was good enough and I did think I worked hard. I put in a lot of time and effort of course, I had health conditions that made it harder, but what she's saying here is very much an emotional kind of manipulation, and I don't even think she realizes she's doing it. I think she honestly put this together on like some note cards or something and then just started talking about it. When you're in it, you don't really realize sometimes what you're doing. She's trying to be relatable. She's trying to relate to being an introvert and being scared about going live and having these limiting beliefs. MLMs tend to focus on limiting beliefs and this comes into play with personal development. So when you're not working hard enough, they turn you to personal development because limiting beliefs falls under that and they're like, okay, you need to work on yourself, do your personal development and then work harder. There's nothing essentially wrong with that outside of an MLM. But within the MLM structure, 
there's a problem because the limiting beliefs and this whole mindset shift thing that they're they're talking about is where you are being told a lot of contradictory things like to work harder or you know if you don't feel good you can totally do this we know in reality the statistics just do not line up with that they do not 99 percent of people fail in this type of business structure okay um another one is imposter syndrome who am i to go on there and talk about it nobody cares about what i have to say you have been through so much. You've been through so many experiences that make you who you are. You've been through things that nobody else has been through. You've been through things that other people have been through. And that is what's going to make you relatable. That's what's going to make you stand out. That's what people are going to be drawn to. They want to feel like you're like them, that they're like you, and that you guys can relate and talk about the experiences you've been through. Okay? Imposter syndrome is such a big one just because so many people think that they aren't good enough and think that they can't do this and they have no business talking about anything. Trust me, there are things that you know that somebody else does not know. There are things that you can talk about that somebody else wants to hear that day. Maybe they look forward talking to you. There's so many different ways that you can bless someone's life just by saying something, just by going live and talking about something that you've been through. So those are three, okay? Again, that was scarcity, limiting belief, and imposter syndrome. Okay, to talk about imposter syndrome, I feel like she's talking a lot about herself right here and talking about like being relatable like I had mentioned before. She's so close to self-aware. There's not much I can add with that other than we all feel imposter syndrome from time to time. And I think this is just another way of trying to relate to that part of that person so if some random person sees this video and they think, oh yeah, I have a lot of imposter syndrome about MLMs, like I don't feel like I should do it. And then they see it and they're like, well, okay, maybe, maybe it's not so bad because other people have that and are doing it. This is just another way to try to relate to people and pull them in to the MLM, which is it can be really dangerous when you're vulnerable. You're going to lose money, friendships, time, value, stuff that is really important. The fourth one is just straight up fear. You're scared to put yourself out there. You're scared to make yourself public on everything. You're scared to be vulnerable and talk about your life. And I'm here to tell you that I was scared to do the same thing, but here I am talking about my life and talking to all of you. And I love sharing this with all of you, but talking about what's going on in my life, what led me here and why I'm doing this, okay? I was the type of girl where my Facebook page, my Instagram page, what else did I have? I didn't even have Twitter. TikTok, I don't think I got till maybe a year after it was out. And even then, I think I had it for a week and I ended up deleting it. Okay, well, all my profile pictures, every platform that I have, they were all private. You couldn't find me if you tried to search my name. Like, I made myself just so obscene. Like, you couldn't find me anywhere on the social media platforms. So, and that was because I didn't want people to know what I was doing. I didn't want people to know about my life. And I was scared sometimes, like, even just posting for personal reasons. I had fear that people were going to judge what I posted about. We need to get past that. We need to realize that there are other people out there like us, and they want to hear what we have to say. So, those are just four things that I think really develop um, our mindset skills that really affect how we show up on social media and they're things that we need to work through and to get over and I'm going to do a follow-up video on how you can get over those four things. Again, that was fear, that was scarcity, that was limiting belief, and that was imposter syndrome and all four of those things are so real and they affect girls every day. They affect women in this industry all over and they're just things that we need to step up, we need to get over, and we need to help each other through and we need to learn how to put our mindset to a point of I am enough. I am worthy. People want to hear what I have to say. People need to hear what I have to say. I could bless someone's life today that I don't know that I did. And I just think it's really important that we share that and we put that out there and that we normalize just being on social media and being our authentic selves. So I have to go. I have one minute left of lunch break, but I hope that sits well with you guys today and I will talk to you all soon. First off, she has one minute left on lunch break. So she spent her whole lunch break doing this video. Good chunk of it because she probably prepared for it before doing it. Anyway, I get the feeling that her outline that she was has been nervous and 
had fears and doubts and imposter syndrome and all these things. And I get the feeling that her upline told her to go into personal development and then go live and talk about these things so that she can help others and recruit them. I feel like that's what's happening here because I feel like she's talking a lot about herself. It just feels like one of those things that they say, okay, go live during your lunch break and get this done so that you can recruit people. She seems like a genuine person that is being brainwashed. That's what that's the vibe I'm getting. She's very pretty. She seems very nice and like she doesn't really feel 100% about what she's doing leave a comment down below what you think but that is my take on it that she's working her job and she's also trying to work this MLM in the middle of her lunch break trying to get let me know your thoughts but that is my thoughts on this all right guys so that's going to be it for today's video make sure that you are subscribed down below and the little notification bell so that you know next time that i have another video out and i will see you in the next one bye